Hello everybody and welcome back to Archangel RC and just for those of you who are not going to see this video to its very end I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Now then, on with the review. Swinging back to planes today with a 680mm wingspan FTC Hunter plug and fly FPV flying wing. This neat little bugger has some intriguing design features which theoretically should make it quite suitable for beginners but then again there is always a but with one T, and I will get to that in due time. The material used here is some form of EPP which makes it very flexible near the wing tips and near the center of the fuselage where the carbon spars are it is quite stiff, the material itself is quite tough actually. The ESC flight stabilizer, video transmitter and camera are all mounted under the top plate protecting them quite well in the event of a crash. There is nothing under the bottom plate it serves only as the opposite holder of the metal spacers both plates screw into and makes the center fuselage area quite rigid and tough. The flight stabilizer requires an SBUS receiver so make sure you have one of those when you get the wing otherwise you will not be able to use it right away unless you remove the flight stabilizer and wire everything directly. A 3S 800mA to 1000mA battery pack would be ideal for this one and I chose to go with the latter mostly because that is the only one I have with a GST connector on it. Upon connecting the receiver and powering everything up make sure all control are moving the right way before flying the wing. All necessary mixing is being done by the flight stabilizer so don't do any of it in your radio just set up a two or three position switch to channel 5 for the flight modes. For the Hunter's maiden flight I thought I'd go somewhere different and since it had been snowing for the past few days and Vitusha mountain was literally all white I decided it would be a beautiful site where I could maiden both the Hunter and the Dart. Lucky for me this particular mountain is 20 minutes away from the city center so I made it there in no time. Sadly the spot where we decided to fly from turned out to be inside some frozen mist as the ambient temperature was around minus 13 degrees but at first I didn't mind because my plan was to fly over the mist and just enjoy the gorgeous scenery. And here we come to that but with the 1T, or actually two of them, but now is only the first one. On 3S this plane has plenty of thrust to go vertical which is awesome as it makes launching it exceptionally easy, but it is not the most docile flyer you could have hoped for. First there is no user manual with this one or at least none came with mine so you really don't know where the CG is and for these first flights in the mountain I'm pretty certain it was slightly tail heavy as it did try to tip stow a few times. Second the stabilization works in very mysterious ways. If you shake the plane around on the ground you may think the stabilization unit is broken as it just moves those control surfaces in all directions at random. Once in the air though it does a pretty good job of leveling and stabilizing the plane but even so it is far from what I'd call beginner friendly. The leveling mode behaves very weirdly and the plane shakes quite a lot when you try to make it turn especially if there's some wind. The gyro mode works better in these conditions but then the plane is very prone to being knocked around by the wind and definitely requires a quick reaction and a lot of experience flying in all sorts of conditions. So please don't do what I just did, especially for the maiden of this plane, go and find a large open field and do it there. Oh and make sure there is no fog as you can quite easily lose sight of it just like it happened to me. Yes I thought I will fly FPV so I took it higher above the mist and lost sight of it but when I picked up the goggles the video was horrendous. And here we come to the second but. At that point I knew I should have put that video antenna in a different position, a vertical one, because with the way it is oriented stock horizontally and pointing forward I only had a good video signal about 30% of the time. The only reason why I didn't lose it was because at least it is loud and that is probably the only situation where a loud plane is actually good for something. The video was either very bad or all I was seeing was the fox so not much help in getting it back, but I was able to hear it in the distance. Just listen. 
Тихо и кали тук. Така, ето я хижата. Знаеш ли, що имаме сигнал сега? Защото сме странично на батерията, на антената. At that point the plane was some 200 meters away apparently and I could still hear it even though I was not giving it full throttle so I circled around until I could hear it coming near and tried to keep it close by so hopefully I can see it at some point. Reviewing the footage showed that one or two times it was very close to touching down on top of a tree so I guess my instincts to always throttle up a bit when I lose the video and pull up on the elevator were justified. Luckily at some point the fog thinned and I was able to see the plane behind me so I immediately brought it down and landed after a few passes. And so comes the next day where the only difference was that it was not in the mountain and there was no fog and no beautiful scenery but even though it was minus 2 degrees it felt like minus 13 at least so okay quite a lot was different actually. Sadly there was still wind so flight performance was not much improved and the plane still required Required quite a lot of input from me and the stabilized mode still behaved like a drunkard during turns. Also in gyro mode it tended to pull up a bit even though I had moved the battery further forward but at least it wasn't tip stalling now. Also apparently the last landing in the mountain had done something to the camera because it was all blurry and I was not able to clean it so didn't even bother recording on the goggles just fluid line of sight. But I have to say once you get the hang of it in gyro mode this plane is quite entertaining to fly even in the wind it definitely has enough power to have some good fun with it although it is far from the speed demon the fury wing is but it is much lighter and much more agile it even flies upside down without needing any stick input to compensate that has never happened before at full throttle i could do continuous loops without a problem and the ESC didn't even burn out. Even though it was freezing out there and windy it was great fun and I suffered through that with a smile on my face. I didn't really test the max flight time with this battery but a 10 minute flight which also included a few verticals and a few continuous power loops resulted in the battery being only half full upon landing so I'd say if flown calmly it could probably do 20 minutes easy so we'll test that when I get the chance. I will have to see if I can repair the camera, if not I will replace it and look for a windless day so I can go out and see what this wing can do. But at least it is good to know that even if you have to fly in turbulent conditions it can handle it very easy if you've got some experience under your belt. Granted flying at FPV on a windy day could cause you to be nauseous because of all the shaking but if you only look for the calm days it could be a smooth flyer. With the coming holiday days I will have some more free time and will keep the hunter ready to spring into action if I chance upon a good day so should have an update on it soon. In the meantime if you fancy any of the items featured in this video you will find their purchase links in the description below so if you decide to buy anything doing so via those links would go a long way towards supporting this channel and would be greatly appreciated. If you found this video interesting please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider doing the same on Facebook for daily updates. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and until next time.